gracious and loving Father, another day has come. And Father, we recognize that you are still God and that you're still on the throne. For when we woke this morning, we knew that it was not because of our own strength and by our own might. We knew, Father, that you still had power. Father, when we woke this morning, we were still in our right mind. So we knew, Father, that you were still granting wisdom and peace in the lives of all of your children. Father, when we woke this morning, we realized that we still had a God that was worth glorifying, magnifying, and edifying. So, Father, we cry hallelujah unto your name. We say thank you for another day's journey. Father, we thank you that when we woke, it is because you rose. And, Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus, who made this possible for all men. Father, I thank you for just being God all by yourself. We know that there is none like you. There's none above you. There's none beneath you. You are the only true and living God. Salvation is through you and by you, and it is for your glory and for your honor. We are just a vessel that you've chosen to use and to save. And we say hallelujah, hallelujah. to our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the perfect Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And Father, it's in that name that's above every name that we say thank you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we offer all of our prayers. And all the children say it together. Amen. Those of you that brought your Bibles with you, would you turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 20, and I'll be reading verses 29 through 34. Pray for me. I feel my throat getting scratchy, and I've been coughing and all that kind of stuff. And many of you know that I didn't get a chance to preach the first Sunday of the year because of sickness. And I'm praying now that that doesn't happen anymore. And the way I feel now, y'all might have a scratchy throat preacher this coming Sunday. But I'm trying my best not to let that hold me back. After the great celebration, and I want to say thank you to all of you that had kind words and gifts and your presence with us on this past Sunday for our pastors and wife anniversary. I want to say thank you. But you did something to me. You stirred up something in me. And I didn't say it then, but I guess I'll say it now. I don't understand how a person can come to church and hear great preaching about a great God and sit and don't say anything. I listened to two sermons and I participated in two worship services, and I can't hold my peace. You just don't know what it did to me to try to sit there and hold my composure. It wasn't just like fire in my bones. It was like fire on my bones. I had a chance to think about how good God had been. I got a chance to reflect at how good God has been. And I got a chance to see that God will never fail. And the first preacher said that you ought to be lit. You ought to be lit. And he set a fire on the first service. And then the other pastor came and preached. And he blessed us with a sermon about the blessed benediction. And I don't know about you, but that meant that you ought to be on fire when you come in. You ought to be on fire while you're there. And you ought to be on fire when you leave out of here. 
that just lets me know that God is a God of eternal joy, eternal peace. I told you, they didn't let me get it out, but this is my time now. I got the mic. I got to tell you that he did something for me that I couldn't do for myself. He put running in my feet. He put joy in my heart. He replaced hatred and filled me with love. He just changed my life. I'm so glad that the Lord didn't rehabilitate me, but he changed me. I ain't been restored to what I used to be. I've been born again. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I want to preach, but I just got to testify. He woke me up this morning. I didn't put my feet on my shoes on my head. Yeah. He woke me up this morning. He clothed me and put me in my right mind. Yes. And with his right mind, I just got to say Tell thank it. you. It, mm. But I got something else that God has placed with me today. <coughs> Matthew chapter 20, reading verses 29 through 34. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thy son of David. And the multitude rebuked them that they should, they should hold their peace. But they cried more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thy son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight. And they followed him. Uh Reading verse 31 again. And the multitudes rebuked them Uh that they should hold their peace. Mm -hmm. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thy son of David. I want to preach for a little while. When holding your peace is the problem. When holding your peace is the problem. There are some that we see here in the scripture today that reminds us of ourselves. Whether you be a church goer, whether you be a worship participator, whether you be uh, one who is standing on the outskirts looking in, You can find yourself in the scripture today. No one is exempt. You can be one in the church house. You can be one outside of the church house. You can be a believer or a naysayer. But you can find yourself in this text today. Because there were a crowd that was around the church. There was a crowd in the church. There were some that didn't frequent the church house. And then here we see some that possibly never left the church house. Everybody's here in the text today. Whether you want to be here or not. I heard a phone going off. Let it play. They might need to participate to do. But here in this text, we see that Jesus was traveling, Uh as he often did doing the work of the church and doing it well and doing and most of us were doing here in the text the same thing that we're doing today many were following him following him without the understanding of really what it takes to follow Jesus some people think it's just some foot action to follow Jesus if I can carry my Bible I'm following him. If I can be faithful, 
to a Sunday 1030 edifice. I'm following Jesus. But many never realize that just because you come to church and carry your Bible, you just as far from him as the heavens are from the earth. Your mind is not like his mind. And just because you've heard every sermon from Genesis to Revelation, yeah, yeah. you think that that's what you're, where you're going to get your reward. Go ahead. But you heard, but you didn't hear. Come on. You've seen, but you failed to, to have sight. And it took two blind men to show those that followed Jesus uh -huh. who Jesus really was text here says that men were following him and he was leaving Jericho and some writers if you look over into the other right other one of the other gospels if you look over into Luke you'll find out that this healing that took place either at Jericho or I mean when he was coming into Jericho uh -huh. or leaving out of Jericho some people have set up and argued the point when you read both writings. Did he heal when he got to Jericho? Or were they healed after he left Jericho? Some said that he called on the healing, yeah. but it took place after he left. Mm. Many of us have discussed this and tried to come up with an answer for it. But also we have learned that there were two Jerichos. That was the original city of Jericho, which is supposedly the oldest city that's known to man. And then there was another Jericho that was built. And see, some people are trying to figure out what Jericho it was. Was he coming from Jericho or was he going to Jericho? Come on now. But, you know, I don't want to argue that point. All I know yeah. is that God can bless you from the oldest city known to man. Right to the newest one that man has ever created. You can put whatever name on it you want to. That's not my concern. I'm just happy that he met us on the road. And all those that called on his name, he heard them and he healed them. But he was leaving Jericho. And the Bible says that two blind men heard him. And we know that one was blind Bartimaeus from the other writings over in the book of Luke. The other writer, other blind man was not known. But let's look at what they did. On, These two blind men heard uh -huh. that Jesus was coming through. Yes. And then they were known to be beggars. Uh -huh. These were professional okay. beggars. Right, right. And they, when they heard that, they, that Jesus was coming through, they began to shout that they could get the attention of Jesus so that healing could take place. Well. That, that, that leads me to what I've said in a subject. Uh -huh. When holding your peace uh -huh. is your problem. <laughs> I saw something for somebody that wasn't used to going to church, yeah, yeah. but they knew how to get and be a beggar. Uh -huh. These were professional beggars, and I believe they were good at it too. And the reason I believe they were good at it because they knew where to go to. Come on now. They knew that in order to be a good beggar, you ought to go to a place where you got people that's got something to give. Right. And they had probably begged for so long that they learned it ain't no use in begging for somebody that doesn't have anything to Come give you. And, if I, and I got to make a suggestion to you that I see here in the text. If you're going to do some begging, you ought to beg from Jesus Come on now. instead of begging for man. Because man doesn't have enough to give you that can satisfy the missing element in your life. But even a blind man could see that Jesus had what he needed. And, and notice that these men asked for something that men were unable to give. He said, give us our sight, because Jesus said, what, what, what is it? But let me bag up before I get there. Let's see what the people that went to church every day said. Come on. Those that followed Jesus, yeah. who could see him, uh -huh. those who saw what he could do, 
who had a history of being the, every time he healed the sick and raised the dead and gave sight to the blind. Why are you telling them to be quiet and let Jesus pass through knowing that that's what he specialized in? He specialized in things that were impossible. But here we had followers of Jesus saying, be quiet and let Jesus pass through. Why would you want to let Jesus pass through when he was one who was frequently by stopping and lending a helping hand, giving sight to the blind, unstopping deaf ears, but here are those who are following him. And I told you, everybody's included today. How many of you have had some people who come to the church house and in need of something and they've been hollering yeah. for Jesus and you've been saying, be quiet, don't act like that. Don't you come down that aisle looking any kind of way. On, but don't you know they're just beggars in need of some bread? Don't you know that they're beggars needing water of life? Yeah. And they may not do it the way you do it. Maybe you've been on your stool of do nothing so long yeah. that you've been thinking that you've been sitting on a hill and, and in a place of authority. But when the world breaks you down, you're not going to look good when you get here. But get out of the way and let somebody get to Jesus. You've already experienced him. You ought to be ready now to let somebody else make their way to salvation. But these men were saying, get out of the way and be quiet and let Jesus pass through. But I'm so glad that God can speak for himself because he stopped and he said to him, what will thou, what is it that ye shall do, that what will ye that I shall do unto thee? Jesus is one who has great compassion. Jesus was one who said, I know they follow him, but don't let that bother you. You're already blind and let that be to your advantage. Don't let what's going on in your life hinder you, but let it be a blessing to you. God says you're blind and you can't see. And that's a good thing right now because you don't need to see these people that's telling you to be quiet and get out of the way. And many of us can't get what we need because we see too much. We see too much hindrance. We see too many hindrances and we see too many problems. And that causes you to keep your focus off of Jesus. And But can I tell you something? Even if you can't see, your focus ought to be enough. And can I tell you something good about Jesus? I have not seen him with my own eyes. Have not felt him with my own hand. But every time I read his word, I hear about it. And then I know he's true. Can I tell you how I know he's true? Because when I pray to him, he answers. When I ask him to heal my body, he did it. I asked him before I asked Dr. Phil Good. When I called on his name, he answered. So I have not seen him, but I can tell you that he's true. And can I tell the sinner man something today? He's going to come down your road. He's going to walk down the road of Jericho in your life one day. And when he comes through, don't fail to hold, uh, and hold your peace. Shout unto him and let him bless you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Came down the road. Those that followed him, they had a problem with the blind beggars. But God loves beggars. Yes. And we, again, we know that one was Bartimaeus, yes. son of Timae. And what and that means is son of the unclean or a child of the unclean. That's a precious moment right there, whether you understand it or not. Can I tell you what I love about God? He, you might be the son of the unclean, yes. but he is the God who can clean you up. I was talking to somebody, I forget who it was, uh -huh. but somebody was saying that how could he be God and let people suffer the way they suffer? Yes. How could he be God and let the innocent die at the hand of the wicked? How could he be God and let us walk around in all this persecution and never deliver us from it? But can I tell you one thing about God? He is the controller of all things because he is the creator of all things, good and bad. But don't you get it twisted. He's got it all under control. 
and 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 now I'm learning him because I'm maturing in him. Come on. Can I tell you what I've learned about God? He'll never have to clean you up if you never get dirty. He'll never have to heal you if you don't get sick. He'll never have to get you to heaven if you don't die. So all this stuff that's going on in life is for my good. And it's for his glory. I let nothing separate me from his love. Every time I get into a bad situation, I get a chance to see how good he is. Every time I fall weak, then I get a chance to see how strong he is. Whenever I'm lost, I get a chance to see that he is a deliverer. So whatever state I'm in, I've learned to be content. But many have looked at it with a blind eye. If he's God, he shouldn't allow these things in our life. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm not trying to sell it to you. I'm giving you this one for free. You can't tell God how to run his business. And you can't outthink God. God has promised us a new heaven. God has promised us to be delivered into a place that is perfect and a place that is right. And he wouldn't be God. If he made this place perfect, if he made this place right, and you ought to get on board and follow after the word of God. You are a beggar, and you're on the road lost. But whenever Jesus comes through, and that's all I'm doing now, I'm letting you know that Jesus is coming through. Somebody's going to hear this message today, and you can't deny it, and you know it's the word of God. He's going to come down your road. And while you're blind, you may not see him, but you heard about it. Because that's what the scripture has said, that they heard that Jesus was coming through. And you can't see him with a sinful eye. You can't see him with carnality. But you heard that he's coming through. And can I tell you how they heard when he came through? They heard his footsteps. They heard his testimony. See, sometimes God does not have to say anything. Because I, I tell you one other thing, that God, you can hear a man twice as much with his actions than you can with his speech. I heard about it, by what he's done for me. When I was unable to see him for myself, I was blind, but now I see. I heard him when I was blind, couldn't find my way. It was the same God who grabbed me by the hand and says, come unto me, my child. Let me show you a more excellent way of life. He turned me around. He picked me up. He planted my feet on solid ground. This God that I'm telling you about, he's well able to carry you. He's well able to protect you. He's God and God all by himself. Lord, what do you want me to do for your children? Lord, that my eyes might be open. You know God is fast. God is quicker before quick can ever get ready. Slow down and listen to the scripture. He said, what will uh, ye that I shall do? They said to him, Lord, that our eyes might be open. (laughs) Can I tell you something? Come on. Before their eyes was open, Uh God had already made them able to see. (laughs) Let me show you something here in the text. It made them jump over. The statement that was made by the blind said something that showed me that they could already see. Can I tell you what it was? They said, Lord. They didn't say, whoever you are, we heard about this man. They said, Lord. And the only way they could say, Lord, is they had to know him. And in order for them to know him, they had to already see him. They said, Lord, that our eyes might be open. Really, in the text, what I see them saying is, We know you're God. We know that you're Lord. Because even at the bottom of the text, they call him son of David. They knew exactly who he was. 
They said, Lord, that our eyes might be open. And whenever a person comes to Christ Jesus, there is a order that God works on you. Yes. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? She had a blood issue. Yes. Well, really, she had two uh -huh. blood issues. One was sickness of the body. Yes. One was a blood issue of the soul. Yes. God said, let me get your soul right first with my blood. Yes. Then I handle your sickness yes. issue which is in your body. God handles you spiritually before he handles you spiritually. I mean, uh, uh, I mean physically. That's why I keep telling folks in the church when you start to witness him, quit trying to get the physical fix and first get the soul fix. The Lord will give you health and strength and he'll give you money, and he'll give you power, and he'll give you authority. That's all true, but that's secondary. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's salvation. And then all that other stuff shall be added unto you. You can't handle the stuff that God gives you if you don't have the right spirit to incorporate what God gives you. So now he, these people are saying in the text, Lord, that our eyes might be open. They're saying, Lord, we've been beggars. Now, Lord, open our eyes that we might see. I'm trying to close, but it's too much in here. I can't get it all. What you want to see first? That's a good question to ask. You've been doing pretty good begging. You at Jericho, now you're on a road where plenty of people came through a transit city that had something to give you. You ain't starved yet. You ain't died yet. But now all of a sudden you want to see. Can I tell you what the Christian ought to do? Well, the moment you meet Jesus, you ought to ask him to open your eyes that I might see. And you ought to know what you want to see. Can I tell you what I want to see? I want to see my way because I want to walk in his presence. You remember when I preached not too long ago that I might dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. I want to walk with him now. I want to talk with him. And in order for me to follow God, I've got to be able to see now. Because when danger comes and he makes his call, I want to know how to get back under the wings of the Almighty. And I want to be able to make sure that I'm walking the road because I ask him to order my step that I might see, Lord. And from the text, it may be important for us to understand that God, is, it is at his will that we see because there's a whole bunch of folks following him that's still blind. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm through with it now. But the text teaches us that Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately their eyes receive sight back to what I just preached about and they followed him you can't follow him if you can't see there's not much you can do if you're void of understanding you can't be the witness that God wants you to be if you can't see him if you don't know him. That's what the scripture is really teaching us. That our eyes of understanding are opened. That we might know him for who he is. That we might follow him in all of his ways. These two men show churchgoers yes, yes. what church followers ought to look like. Showed them that you can't just go to church. And think you got it together. You got to be able to see. And if you're able to see, that means you ought to be able to walk right. You ought to be able to talk right. You ought to know when to go and where to go. Then you ought to know how to go. But can I tell you one thing that I see, and I, I can never close a sermon without telling you something that I saw few years ago when I was just a little baby boy, I looked up on a hill, and there I found Jesus. 
going up a hill with an old rugged cross. The Bible tells me that he climbed that hill with a with a cross on his shoulder. Yes. And then the question was asked, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? But there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. You ought to carry your cross with you up on Calvary. But you can't get your cross up on Calvary if your eyes hadn't been open. But that's why I told you I saw him going up on a hill called Calvary. And up there on Calvary, they showed me where they pierced his hands and spiked his feet. They stretched him wide and they hung him high. See, somebody that can't see gets tired of hearing this message. But since my eyes have been opened, this is the glorious gospel of our Lord and Savior. It gets better to me every time I get a chance to tell the story. Because up there, he shed his blood. And I tell you, I saw it up there. Because the Bible tells me that he shed his blood, that all men might live. Not only did he shed his blood, because that paid for sin. Yes. <clears throat> what else paid for sin is that he died. Yes. He died when he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder. Again, the sinner man's getting mad right now, but you ought to come unto him now. Yes. Because this is salvation, and it doesn't cost you anything. He died up there that you might live. And, and if you don't believe me, you ought to believe his word. And you can believe his word if you have faith in him. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But God says, have faith in me and believe that not only did I die, but I rose again with all power of heaven and earth in my hand. And when he rose, that means that he's coming back again. And when he comes back again, all those that have been saved and can see now know that he's coming back again because we got faith in him. And when he comes again, then I won't have to worry about him opening these eyes anymore. I'm where I, I be thankful now that he'll give me a new set of eyes. But what I look at now, I won't see sin anymore. I see salvation then. When he comes back and gives Give me the body that he's promised me. I won't see pain anymore. I won't see death anymore. I won't see wickedness anymore. He'll give me sight like none other has seen. He'll take me to a perfect place, a place where the streets are made of gold. He'll take me to a place where there are mansions in his kingdom. He'll take me to his place. And then I'll see God for who he truly is. My eyes shall be open. I'll be able now to love him like I want to love him. I'll be able to know him like I want to know him. I'll be able to understand him like I want to understand him. Then I'll know that he is God. When holding your peace might be the wrong thing. Don't let anybody stop you from shouting. Yes, Unto the Lord. Because the Bible teaches me that when I shout praises to him, he's glorified. When I shout my pain to him, he's a deliverer. When I lift up holy hands and I dance in his name and I make noise to him, that makes him happy. And he delights when his children call on his name, call unto the Lord with a loud voice. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. 